In recent years, I have experimented a lot with different Stirling engine configurations to support our solar self-sufficiency in times of low sunshine. At the moment, I'm very interested in the thermoacoustic and thermal lag engines, but I'm unsure about their potential of producing useful power. I achieved the best results with more than 300 watts of power using the original Rhombic Stirling engine. Also, I believe in much undiscovered potential of the half rhombic drive with its benefits of a much less complex linkage. I want to discover which configuration is the best to support the energy production for our solar power supply. So I would like to start a serious comparison between the original rhombic drive and the half rhombic coupling. On both engines I use exactly the same heat exchangers and almost the same volume variations, so the performance can be compared directly. Let's begin with the original Rhombic Drive engine. I developed it in the last years from a simple atmospheric low power engine to a pressurized high performance Stirling with lots of sensors and accessories. The heat exchangers surely required by far the most effort for research, development and manufacturing. It was not only a challenge to increase performance, but also reliability and durability. For example, with increasing power I had to make many different gears, from POM, tribological plastics, tallen to brass, and now the only durable but noisy ones of steel. Other components which I had to improve for the next tests were the bearings of the connecting rods. They are of the special dry running tribological plastics which had always been durable and very quiet in operation. With the higher power levels they now only last a few hours and I decided to use roller bearings instead. A CAD CAM file was made and manufactured in high performance aluminium alloy.
compression and atmospheric pressure is light. At only 4 bar test pressure, the engine is designed to 10 bar mean pressure, it's hard to turn the flywheel by hand. Only 4 bar test pressure and the smallest flame of the burner is used for the first test run because everything still has to be run in and balanced. I don't want the engine to run faster than 1000 rpm. The new roller bearings sound quite rough, but hopefully it will be better with some balancing, as the new connecting rods weigh much more than the old ones. This first test run went quite promising, and after some fine tuning and balancing, I can hopefully carry out serious performance and efficiency testing and compare it to the half engine. I hope to report on this soon in the next part.